Figure it out. Hello, this is Adam Korlick with Figure It Out Productions. The following video is part of our quick shoot series. Hey guys, it's Adam here, and today we're going to clean, restore, and hopefully get working a Coleco Gemini, one of history's most obscure consoles, and one I'm sure most of you probably won't need to know how to clean up. But nevertheless, I've got the opportunity to do it, so let's get into it. Uh, first, I gotta extend a thank you to a guy named Ivan. He uh, gave me this along with a bunch of other 70s consoles, all for free. Hell of a nice guy to do that. That was really just amazing. Um, brief history of this console, in case you're curious. Coleco was at one time a big computer company, and they had their own console called the Coleco Vision that was released in 1982 to compete with the Atari 2600, basically. And they realized that the Coleco Vision wasn't nearly as successful, so they thought, well, you know what, the Atari 2600 is successful. Why don't we just make our own console that plays Atari 2600 games? And that's what the Coleco Gemini is. Now, there's a long, convoluted story as to how that's even possible, but to put that into perspective, that would be like if Nintendo looked at the PS4 and said, man, the Wii U is just not selling the way the PS4 is. You know what? Screw it. Forget the Wii U. Let's make uh, the Nintendo Station, Nintendo Station, or some ridiculous name, and it just plays PS4 games. That'll be our new console. That's pretty much what happened. Um... Odd release. As far as I know, it only came out in North America. In the United States, it was only released through a magazine service called uh, Columbia House. And in uh, Canada, it was the only place where it was released over uh, in stores, in a store shelf. So this is the Canadian version, um, which is much more common, although still in of itself not common. The American version has a slightly different label on it, and uh, it's extraordinarily rare. Um, so yeah, there you go. There's a brief history. Now let's get into the point of this video, which is we're going to clean it up. Because as you can see, it's got a lot of dirt and stuff on it. It's, you know, just been kind of sitting around probably getting dust and everything. Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, start with the most basic move here is you just kind of flip it over and as you'll see there are six screw points on the console and it's really simple it just uses a basic Phillips head screwdriver. Once you have your screws out you'll notice something pretty quickly there's three long ones and three short ones. The long ones go in the front here and the short ones go in the back so just keep that in mind when it's time to put the thing back together. So now what we're gonna do is take the lid off it comes off real simple and see the damage it um, yeah there's a lot of spider webs and shit in there and there's the inside lots of dirt and stuff but uh, we'll focus on that in a bit right now we're gonna take the lid and we're gonna go uh, wash it up with some soap and water and a brush you know that kind of thing and just make it as clean as we possibly can hopefully get this weird stain out of there okay I've cleaned it up with soap and water and uh, it looks really good uh, it looks not great on camera but because it, it looks like there's scuffs or something but that's just dry parts versus wet parts You'll, I'll show you the final result in a bit. But uh, yeah, it looks really good. A lot of the dust and stuff is gone, so it's excellent. Um, all the cobwebs and everything are gone. So I'm going to put this off to the side and let this dry and bring in the board. Now we want to do the exact same thing with the bottom piece of plastic. So in order to do that, we have to take the board out of there. And it looks like there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven screws. Probably just be able to lift the board right out. So I'm going to start, wait. Oh, okay, there's absolutely no resistance. <laughs> so there you go. Just take the board and put it off to the side. And uh, there we go, we get the bottom thing that's disgusting. I mean, that stuff's been trapped in there, very likely, since the early 80s, since before I was even born. So that tells you something. So what we're going to do is the exact same thing. I'm just going to take this and uh, wash it with soap and water and scrub it and just get it as clean as I possibly can. I think it looks really good. You get all that dirt and shit out of there. It looks great. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and put it off to the side and let it dry, and uh, we'll bring in the board. Now, the most obvious thing that's wrong with the board is there's like a lot of fucking dust all over it. So to get that off, uh, generally I recommend compressed air, but in my case, I'm gonna be using the DataVac electric duster. I highly recommend this thing. It's fucking awesome. Um, so, it basically just sprays air and gets the dust everywhere. Uh, I will be lowering the volume of this for your benefit, but basically this is all you're gonna do. Yeah. Now, of course, there's still dust clumps on there, so you, you might want to focus and, you know, get the uh, dust off that you feel needs to be removed. Once you're satisfied with the amount of dust clumps that have come off, I highly recommend taking a dry Q-tip and just kind of going around the board like this very generally and just seeing what kind of little bits of dust you can get off because um, obviously the, you know, compressed air isn't going to get everything. And as you can see, a lot comes off. So I basically recommend doing that kind of to your satisfaction, and then once you're done with that, I also recommend uh, doing this again because you don't know what kind of dust it'll kick up. So of course, the more dust you remove from this thing, the not only the cleaner it'll get, but the higher probability you'll get it working and that it'll work for a longer period of time. 
One thing I noticed that might be worth your time is, as you can see, these two little circular things are dusty. These two are not. Basically, all I'm doing is taking these right off of here, kind of wiping it on my finger, and uh, just putting it right back down there and making it clean again. I suggest doing that. A couple other little moves I might recommend is if you go in by the controller ports here, I might recommend kind of taking a dry Q-tip and just kind of going in there and seeing what kind of dust you can kick, da kick out. You probably can't see it, but a little cloud just puffed out of there. Around these little uh, switches here as well. You know, just get stuff off there. And I would also, again, recommend, you know, doing this and getting more of it out of there. But, you know, of course, to your own satisfaction. But the other thing I would also recommend is flipping it back around here and looking at the RF port and basically taking a Q-tip and just kind of, you know, wedging it into the RF port and then turning it a few times and then pulling it out. And, well, this one actually didn't have that much on it, but a lot of the time when you do that, there will be a lot of dust in there. I'm kind of surprised, actually. But uh, nevertheless, you can always, you know, wipe around that area and see what comes up. And in this case, yeah, a lot of shit. So at this point, we're going to do the most logical thing you can do to get this thing working, which is to clean up the cartridge slot, of course, where the games are actually inserted. Now, to do this, uh, there's a few different options. I'll show you the method I will be using. I'm going to be taking this. This is a cartridge cleaning kit. It basically consists of a bunch of little plastic things like this. And what you do is you take Windex or Window Lean, as it's known in certain parts of the world, uh, and you kind of squirt some on there, wipe it on both sides, and then you just kind of take it and stick it into the cartridge slot and just kind of clean the contacts, going back and forth, etc. Um, now I'm, I'm just going to stop there and, you know, some of the dust will come off on my finger. Uh, I'll do it more off camera, of course, but um, the problem is with the Atari 2600 cartridge slots, it's a really small, unique shape, so this is the biggest one I can get in there. Uh, so you might have to come up with more creative methods. Option number two is what's called the credit card method. You take a credit card, you wrap it in felt cloth, and you basically do exactly what I just did. But again, that won't even fit in here. So you'll have to like do it, you know, kind of creatively, like doing one angle at a time and just kind of do your best. There is a third option though. I do not recommend this, but it is an option. You can take an Atari 2600 game. In this case, uh, ironically, one by Coleco, actually. Uh, and it had the re this one matters, though, because, as you can see, uh, its pins are exposed. Uh, most Atari 2600 games, that's not the case. You can't actually get to the pins without a screwdriver to kind of push back some plastic. Um, what you can do is you can actually take, you know, like a Q-tip, and you can take some Windex, spray it on the Q-tip, and then kind of lightly put it on there on both sides, and then remove it, and then use the cartridge as, like, a cleaning tool. Again, I do not recommend this, but it is an option. Uh, once you, you know, do that a few times, you take another Q-tip and you get, you know, the dirt off of there and then basically repeat the process. In essence, transferring dirt to this and then this to a Q-tip. If you end up doing this, I should have recommended, of course, that you pick like a shitty sports game or a game you really don't care about or that you have extra copies of. Uh, I'm not using this one, of course, but I wanted to point it out because it doesn't have any plastic bits underneath. So, make, again, that's important. But the uh, point is, once you've done whatever method you end up doing, uh, you're going to want to, again, take your compressed air, or in my case, DataVac thing, and you're going to want to blow some air in there and get excess moisture out. While we're waiting for the case to dry, I thought I'd go ahead and show you guys the controller. The controller is actually really unique and uh, why some people actually really prefer this console over the Atari 2600. Uh, basically, you get the, the, the joystick that you usually get on the 2600, but you also get, you know, of course, the button. But then it also includes this, the dial for uh, Atari 2600 games that needed that. A lot of people say this is a much better controller. Um, I don't, there's nothing really wrong with it, so I'm not going to do much in the way of cleaning it. There is some dust around it, so I figured, what the hell, we could at least do that. So, uh, for that, all I'm going to do is take a, you know, a Q-tip and, uh, again, some Windex and just, you know, spray it on there. It, this controller, ironically, is pretty clean, so I'm just going to kind of go around there and get whatever little bits of dust off I can get. And, uh, but yeah, there's, there's really not much else to it because... Like I said, this one isn't very dirty, so I'm not. I'm, not, I'm just not going to bother taking it apart. I just don't really think it's worth it. The plastic is now completely dry, so it's time to put the console back together. So this is pretty easy. All we're going to do is take the motherboard and uh, sit it back into place. Bam! All right, most of the work's already done. Now, as you might recall, there are seven screw points, uh, and of course, you have those tiny little screws. So just go ahead and uh, put all seven of those right back into place. All we have to do is take our lid and uh, just sit that back in, and uh, yeah. Believe it or not, the console's basically back together. Of course, we have to flip it over and put our other screws in. Now, as you might recall, there were three big ones that will go right there, 
there, and there on the front, and three smaller screws that will go on the back there, there, and there. Okay, the console is officially back together. This is a really simple one, as you can see, and it also looks a hell of a lot better than it did originally. Uh, that big mark is gone, other dust bits are gone, of course, which would be, you know, expected. But uh, it's not perfect. It's still got, it, it's very dull. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring out a nice shiny coat to it and try to make it look as new as we possibly can. And for that, we're going to use Pledge. Um, this is known as Pronto in certain countries. It's basically like a, a furniture type of cleaner, um, or just a generic cleaner in general. Uh, all you got to do is take a paper towel and spray some just on there like that and uh, wipe down the plastic. And uh, you know, you're going to want to do this on the front, on the top there, on the front, the sides, the back, the bottom, and then you know, just kind of let it dry for like 10-15 minutes. All right, and there we go. And I think it looks incredibly good, especially compared to where it started. I think black consoles in particular always look the best after you've done all the work, especially with Pledge at the end. They really clean up well, as long as there's no like real scars or physical damage. I mean, there's, there is a chip there, but you know, stuff like that you can't do anything about. But really, once they've been cleaned, they tend to look really good. So that's really awesome. But of course, the important question, does it work? I don't know. Why don't we go ahead and find out? Okay, got everything set up here, and I figured we'd test it with that uh, Coleco copy of Donkey Kong. I figured that was really appropriate. Uh, so let's pop it in there. Sorry, one-handed. Uh, interesting little fun fact. Uh, you can use an Atari 2600 Junior power supply. They're the same thing. Uh, so let's go ahead and turn it on. And awesome! It works. First try. No problem. So, does the controller work? Let's find out. Push the button there. Yep. <laughs> works just fine, which is great. Uh, he is totally gonna die. Uh, I have no chance of that not happening, so uh, I apologize. Yeah. Alright, yeah, sorry about that. It's impossible to play that shit with one hand. But uh, there you go, guys. Uh, on the off chance you were one of the handful of people on the planet who actually needed to know how to clean, restore, and hopefully repair one of these things, I hope I could help you out. Uh, thank you again to Ivan for hooking me up with this. Again, that was really, really cool of you, and uh, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you all later.